Rachel K. Collier, and you're watching RKC Weekly. Welcome back to RKC Weekly, everybody. I'm excited to be here chatting to you this Sunday evening. As last Sunday, I dropped a full performance video with my two live percussionists. <laughs> live show in London on Tuesday the 19th of November. I'm going to go all out. DMX lights and both girls on percussion. Tickets are on sale now. Link here. On Wednesday I got to check out Look Mum No Computer at XOY. <laughs> uh, I forgot what these notes are. <laughs> <laughs> it comes back in a sec. I can never remember those chords. And also, I've been doing quite a lot of masterclasses lately around in the UK. And what's been coming up in conversation quite a lot is plugins. So I thought with less than two weeks to go before my album drops, this would be a super cool time to share with you the most used creative plugins that I couldn't have made my album without. Now, obviously I use quite a lot of plugins, so I've chosen the top five to talk you through today. Let's get to it. Number one, Ableton Live Tens Pedal. So this is track one from the RKC album, it's called Dark Shade and I've opened it up, I've got the whole Ableton project here guys and we're going to show you how much I love this pedal plugin. I'm a big fan of saturation plugins, especially ones that are low on the CPU and what I love about this Ableton pedal is it's got the three main parameters, overdrive, distort and fuzz and how they all affect the sound completely differently and also you've got your sub here so you can increase the sub frequencies if you want to and the dry and wet which you definitely need in all plugins great but it's very simple to use and I'm going to show you a couple of sounds in this project and what they would sound like without the pedal plugin. So I'm going to start with one of my all-time favorite Ableton sounds and that is the guitar mute and let's solo it and let's hear it without the pedal. Here we go. Now I'm not a guitarist myself so I don't like to put too much guitar in my tracks because I want to make sure I can play as much stuff live but I do love this little guitar mute sound and check it out with the pedal on. So simple but so effective and you can hear how these parameters change the sound quite dramatically. I also love to automate things so I've automated the treble a little bit here which you can see but yeah and then I've used it here also in this super synth sound which is just a sound that I've used to sort of glue things together for my transitions. Let's hear it without the pedal first. And now let's hear it with the pedal. And again, it's just made it a lot thicker, warmer, fuzzier, and that's on the distort setting here. I've absolutely rinsed it. <laughs> if you go through all my projects, and I am giving away the stems. Uh, they're on sale now, actually, on my Bandcamp. If you pre-order, you also get a free sample pack. Uh, link up there for that. But yeah, you'll probably hear how much I've used the Ableton Live Tens pedal. Number two is, wait for it, drum roll please, Sound Toys Echo Boy. So I'm a big fan of the Sound Toys. They make quite a lot of cool plugins that are all really user friendly. They are maybe a little bit expensive if you're first starting out or something, but Black Friday is around the corner. I'm not a fan of Black Friday, but it is good for plugins. So look out for a Sound Toy sale. Now I use them all, but the Echo Boy is probably the one I use most. I use it mainly for vocals. So I've opened up Bad Day here, which is track number nine from my record. I'll play you a little snip of it. Let's go from the verse here. You've got a problem for every solution. That's enough. So 
I've got the lead vocal here. Let's solo it and let's turn off the Echo Boy here in this massive chain of mine. All you can see is the smoke and pollution. And this is a very simple set in here. Just pop on my Echo Boy. It's raining outside and your hair has gone wild. And I love automating the feedback with these Echo Boys. Oh, Mother Nature, she puts you through trials. It's a very high quality sound output. That's why I love them. And again, they're super easy to use. I've also used it here on my pre-chorus. So let me solo that for you guys. She can't turn her back, she can't drive away or escape it. Let's turn off the Echo Boy. But you bad day could be a play for a girl in a city with no say. Need to now rethink the way I'm thinking. Again, default because, you know, I'm basic. And there we go. So highly recommend the Echo Boy for loads of cool vocal slap delays, long delays, ping pong delays. And there's lots of cool things you can do actually on the plugin besides, you know, your high, your low cut. You've got the style down here. Uh, the bisonet is cool. I also like the Telray one. Sounds a bit radio-ish. You've got your tape, your master tape. And yeah, I'm using cheap tape for this one. Uh, you can also tap in the tempo of your delay and you can obviously choose the length, whether you want to do an eighth note, a sixteenth note, whatever you want to do. But yeah, so Echo Boy is the second probably most used plugin I couldn't have made my album without. Number three is the very cute and datey favourite little plugin of mine, Haas. Now this little Haas is made by a super cool Swedish company called Kila Hearts. They make loads of awesome plugins, quite creative ones that are really simple and easy to use. For example, check out this little thing here. That's all it is. I mean, how easy is this to use? You can either bring the delay that way or that way. But yes, let me tell you why I love it. So before I made this album, and this is track number two called Dinosaur, I was listening to some tunes on Spotify and I realised that my songs sounded quite narrow, like they were just going down one path. And I really wanted to like increase the stereo spread, but not just with pan. I really wanted to make it sound a little bit more around my head rather than just in front of me. And that's when I started experimenting with um, stereo width plugins. And I tried a couple, Ozone, there's uh, a Haas effect that I made in Ableton. And then I came across this little one made by Kilo Hearts. And I love it. It's super subtle. You can't go too crazy with it either because you don't want to affect your mono mix too much. Um, but in use sparingly uh, and in a variety of places throughout your production on different frequencies, I really feel like it helps enhance that stereo feeling in your track. So let me show you. I got a couple of sounds here in this project. I'm going to turn off the haz and you can hear it with and without. So this is some kind of quirky vocal sound with the haas. And then in the mix. Really subtle, but I love it. And let's go to this track here, which I called Faster for some reason. So we'll hear it with the haas now. And now without the haas. I think it really changes the sound of it. And then in the mix. Now you can use this Haas effect on anything, which is why it's kind of cool. So when I'm producing, sometimes if I just want a bit of vibe straight away, I'll just drag it in. It doesn't always work, you know, it depends on the type of production you want to do. And like I said, you don't want to go overboard with it. Otherwise, when you press, your little mono speaker, you're not gonna hear anything. So yeah, number three is the Haas Effect by Kila Hearts from Sweden. Mwah. Number four, the epic Valhalla Vintage Verb. Ta -da. So recently I found out the word Valhalla, where it actually comes from, and I thought it was super cool. A mythical place that, where the gods go if they die. So I can imagine this is why they've named it Valhalla Vintage Verb. Just gonna check with Ben who's filming, is that correct? Sort of. 
Okay, anyway, we can do our research about that later. So let's talk about the reverb here, guys, because this is one of my favorite reverbs. It's just super cool. Again, super easy to use. It's relatively cheap. Mostly, I just you play with the mix, the pre-delay and the decay here, and of course, the low cut, because we never want to have too much reverb on all the unwanted lower frequencies. You can also change the colour, whether you want a 1980s sound or a now sound. I'm quite lazy and just usually the default is what I work from, as you can see, which is a similar pattern for most of my production. Although I do quite like very nice haul at um, a low mix and a low decay. But let's get to it, let me show you how it sounds. So I've opened up Tattoo here. I can't remember what number this track is on the album, one of my most honest songs, and one that I had a lot of fun producing because I didn't follow any rubbish commercial pop music rules. I wrote a whole A section and then a B section. And uh, yeah, I'll just give you a little taste. Cry. Maybe one of the more dreamy RKC tunes. Let's have a little look at this sound here. Uh, let's solo it. And you can see the G send here is my Valhalla verb. So if I solo the send, turn off the send, and then turn on the send. On the settings here for this reverb, oh look, default. Got a slightly lower decay and mix midway through. Let's listen to it on number 66 as well, so you can hear the verb again. Uh, I mostly kind of used a lot of sends when I was producing this record, um, but when it went to mixing that was a bit of a pain in the butt, so I've been using a bit less sends for my instrumental album that I'm working on at the moment for YouTube. I'm super excited to share that with you guys. It'll be a few months, but it will be music that you guys can use in all your videos for free, and it's all instrumental. But let me stop talking and show you this little sound. Very similar settings. I love the tail on these as well. Turn off the verb. Dodgy note there. But I absolutely love automating this plugin. The mix or the decay. And sometimes what I do is I put it on max and then I record the output of that track and then reverse them so I get these big huge swells and really great for my transitions. So that is the Valhalla Vintage Verb, probably another highly used plugin, still use it all the time for everything. Obviously as a producer I'm evolving and I keep adding more plugins, but the Valhalla um, still one of my favourites. Number five of the most dominated RKC plugin collection is going to have to be the LFO tool, made by what I call XFER, but I've heard other people call them XFR and also like XFR and yeah, I just don't know how to pronounce it. So if you do know, please <laughs> let me know in the comments below, but let's get to it. Let me tell you why I love this plugin. So firstly, again, it's super easy to use. It's a lazy side chainers plugin, I guess. And I guess there are probably quite a lot of side chain plugins around, but this one is relatively cheap and again, super effective. It's got some preset side chains that you can play with, um, but I'm just gonna show you how this sounds on the final track from my record, Predictions Dreams. So let me give you a little taster of the track. <laughs> Solo this, it's called Sidechain Tag. And now without the LFO tool. And again with it. So I love this, I especially love drowning something out with reverb. There we have it, Valhalla Vintage Verb is there again. Uh, default, my favourite, but I've quite a lot long decay on this. And then with the LFO tool after it, really tidies up the sound. I just love that sound, I think it sounds cool. And then let's check out another sound. We've got the drone here, which I think sounds kind of waspy, but let's have a listen. 
got a little Ella photo here. And let's turn it off. So really the LFO tool here is giving this all the rhythm that we need in this little part. Let's turn it on again. And then... Next. And look, we've got the Echo Boy here. <laughs> we've got, oh, without the default for a change, we've got the Valhalla again. Uh, yeah, so the LFO tool, and I've also used it in this track on my return F send. So I've got like a Valhalla here um, with a full wet, which we need to have for our sends, of course, otherwise you're going to get kind of double the sound coming through. So we've got a full wet here for our send, and then I've got a little delay and um, an LFO tool here for the send. So if I solo the send, So you can hear those sounds coming through. And again, I quite like the LFO tool. He's just neatening things up, keeping it all a bit more compact. And you can be so creative with this. There's a record, a tune I'm working on right now. Like I said, that instrumental album I'm working on where I've made like it's this system eight synth and um, it's a really straight bass line. And I've put a creative pattern here on the LFO tool in and I've made it sound like a proper acoustic bass. So I'll definitely break down those plugins that I've used for that album in a video as well when that's released. So I hope you enjoyed this little video on these creative plugins I've used. Obviously I've used a load more but these are maybe the top five and these are the creative ones not the mixing plugins that is a total other video if you want to you can pre-order my album and get a free sample pack right now from my website you can also pre-order the stems if you want to go full in and listen to the whole record all in isolation if you don't already please subscribe and if you want to get super 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 nerdy then you can head to my patreon right now see you next week on rkc weekly